Hey everyone, welcome back. It's nice to see you all again. So I made a thing and I thought maybe you'd like to see the thing and see how it's made. So I've done a little craft with me session which is coming up. Um, before that I thought I would just show you a little slideshow of close-ups and details uh, because I've made quite a few um, all different and it, it seemed quicker just to show you this way that rather than uh, fumbling about with the video camera trying to get it to focus so you can see some of the lovely papery goodness um, here in these shots um, so we've got like nice little pins and fabric scraps we've got paper fasteners holding things or not holding things um, we've got tatty paper edges. I've used quite a lot of this gummed tape and lovely yellowed sellotape. Coffee stains and splashes. This um, silver paper clip, just very plain, works very well with the utilitarian style. We've got some labels and this fabric loop works very well, I think. Well, I've used masking tape, some number stamps, some ripped labels, um, little tatty bits of cheesecloth, as you can see, sticking out the tops. And um, you'll see that some of them are very plain and some of them you can, of course, add scrapbook papers. Um, as you wish to make them as pretty as you want you can add lace and ribbons and and all the fancy stuff um, I wanted to sort of start from a, a plainer place and um, develop from there so um, it's not a very complicated thing in itself it's just a basic envelope that I've covered um, just to make a like an ephemera holder <coughs> excuse me but for me this uh, project is really it's all about the details which I'm going to go through with you and how how I've built those details up and lay, layered things up and um, the inspiration for the project I'll talk about in a minute as well so I've trimmed down an envelope to the size that I want and you can use that little off cut to make an extra pocket if you wanted on the inside. I'm not doing that. Um, so I'm just going to use this piece and I'm opening up the flaps before I start uh, covering my covers. So the size that I'm working with is a C5 envelope folded in half and um, the envelopes that I had I didn't happen to like the paper it was a little bit thin so I'm just using um, a different packet I've got some A4 envelopes here that I just marked up and trimmed to size uh, you want to be keeping the side that has the flaps because the flaps are important for this particular project So I have my papers already picked out. Um, I was really keen to have a red kind of accent or theme on this one. Um, so I found some old sewing pattern paper, um, which was actually white. I have tea dyed this one. It's a bit more modern than the old brown ones. Um, so it has got some color on it as well. It's got red lines one side. And as you can see on the back, there's um, like a cross stitch chart, something or embroidery chart, something like that. Um, so I'm just sort of roughly collaging the um, the four surfaces I've got. So if you count those as two on the outside cover, and then it will be the same for the inside. I was really hoping that the um, the blue chart from the other side would show through so I'm pleased with that. Um, I'm leaving the edges a little bit rough. Um, if there's a bit of overhang at the top that's a good thing. And 
I also wanted to make sure to leave the middle seam open and that would, as well as helping with um, not having too much bulk when your envelope is folded, um, I think just getting that tiny bit of brown showing through is just giving you an extra little dimension or layer um, where it's not covered up. So that's a good thing too. I've also picked out some uh, ledger papers because they've got uh, red lines and um, I've picked a few different ones from ledgers that I have. Uh, if you don't have ledgers you can use book page or you can just make it pretty with scrapbook papers, anything that you have. Um, I'm using this little piece again from the sewing paper. It's got a, like a key for the colours of the threads to use so it's, it lists all the colours so I thought that was quite a nice detail to add. Um, so you can collage piece by piece as I'm doing um, if you want to. Uh, otherwise you can just cut out four pieces of scrapbook paper um, to size and use those uh, just as a solid piece. Um, the thing to remember with this one is not to have it too neat and tidy. Um, so have them sticking out the top or even if you cut them a little bit smaller actually would also be nice or tear them rather um, so that you have a little bit of a brown um, frame going around the edges that would also look good. So you've probably noticed guys that I'm narrating this uh, video after the event um, and the way it's worked out I have a little gap here <laughs> Um, and I couldn't fit this at the end so I'll do my spiel now if you don't mind. Um, I have a journal finished, uh, well it's been finished for weeks but waiting to be filmed so I hope to get to that in the next week or so. Um, so please follow me on here by clicking the subscribe and bell, follow me on Instagram where I will post to say that the journal video is up um, and ready. As always if you see ideas and inspiration here that you'd like to show in your work please give credit where it's due. And don't forget to visit my website there is a gallery of journals there with lots of close-ups for more inspiration. I also have some digital downloads and I've stocked my shop at the moment. I have some scrap paper checkbooks some pocket flower presses and some lino print book plates. Okay so back to the video. Um, I didn't think of this while filming but uh, some graphite pencil would I think look really good. Um, allow it to be a, a little blunt so I'm going to go in after and add a few little notes and annotations here and there to the ones that I've done. have some dark grey cheesecloth that I thought would go nicely with the red on this envelope so I'm just measuring up and cutting two strips to go along the top. Also because um, I've bodged up this video countless times I have at this stage run out of jotter paper, the, um, the trim that goes along the top of the uh, spiral bound notebooks so I like to have some of that tea dyed and ready but I'd run out at this point so I'm just um, distressing a little strip and as you can see that looks really nice sticking out from the other side um, kind of officey if that's a word I 
I'm also going to use these two book pages um, and I want to use the side that's been torn out of the book so it's a little bit of a rough edge and I'm just tearing two strips that fit along the top of my envelope. I'm using a wet glue here because uh, the cheesecloth that I have is a dress quality, it's a bit thicker than I would usually use um, like a really open weave one but I thought this the colour of this one was really nice. So I'm just sticking as you can see two strips along there and I'm using the book page um, so that as you use the envelope things don't get stuck on the fabric so the fabric is kind of encased behind paper. And I've got the nice torn edges of the book page just sticking out a little bit off the um, from the top of my envelope. I'm going to use sandpaper to um, rough up the edges of my flaps and I'm giving it a really good going over. I want it nice and rough and um, a little bit torn, just worn out looking. We want to really age it as much as possible. And then I'm going over and distressing. Um, if you can remember to distress a little bit on the other side, on the glue side as well, that's good because as we um, peel back some of those corners, um, we, will, we will see some of the ink on the other side as well. And then I'm just, as you can see, just tearing a little bit and making it look rough and curling back the corners. I'm just opening up that little seam where one side of the envelope is shorter than the other and rubbing away the glue. So at this point you should have a whole row of little sticky out bits at the top as shown. So for anyone who uh, doesn't know, these are called treasury tags. Um, it's what we used to use in the days before ring binders. Um, so it was, it was just a convenient way of holding loose papers together. Um, usually you would put them inside a manila um, folder and uh, just use two of those through the holes. Um, so I'm not actually using them correctly. You're not supposed to cut the ends off. But th these are just for decorative purposes and just for pretend as it were. So um, I've got one on the front and then I'm just putting two random uh, ring binder holes on the inside. Um, what I realised was it was a bit too random and I've managed to get the inside hole exactly over the place where the that first one was so I didn't like that it showed through the hole so I covered that over with book page and then I'm going to put my other two through and I'll just say that when you are sticking these, I'm just using sellotape, uh, make sure that the front is exactly how you want it and that it's um, lying comfortably before you stick it down otherwise it will just stick up at a weird angle. Um, and when I taped that first one I realised that I didn't like seeing the sellotape through the little hole so I've cut that away. there I'm adding my um, thumbnail and a little strip of red paper behind it, just uh, decorative. Um, you wouldn't believe that I couldn't find any red paper in the house so I just used a bit of marker and um, 
stuck that on with sellotape again. For the second piece of red uh, paper that you saw me stick on, um, that's for the stapler stapler that you'll see me with in a moment. And uh, you want the colour of your paper um, facing the right side. So I want red showing on my little tags that it cuts out. Cuts out a little tag and then threads it back through a slot as you can see those two little red bits sticking out and I also want where the holes are to have red again so I'm just using a marker and colouring in a little spot behind so that's what that looks like pretty cool this is my cherry coloured silk that I'm always banging on about <laughs> I think I'll still be talking about it on my deathbed just like the tailor of Gloucester um, so actually I think this is why I decided to go with red I really wanted to use it for a binding most of the envelopes that I made I've left open in the middle just to make like a bigger envelope and this one I thought I would just sew up the middle a little bit so um, I've just gone from the bottom to the top this is not a proper binding but I've just stitched uh, in and out in and out I've made a knot and I've just used the scissors to fray the ends a little bit um, and at the moment I just want to hold it in place uh, because I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing on the other side yet so I just put a little blob of glue and I hope that that works and that's me just gluing the, um, the bottom flap if you can achieve a nice roll rather than crease it back that works really well and uh, it looks really effective it looks like it's just curled back by itself over the years um, so I really really like using that uh, method um, so it just needs a little bit of patience just to um, gently manipulate it and this that I'm using now, this is um, gummed tape or watercolour tape. It's what we used to use to um, uh, stick parcels, parcel tape, um, or stretch watercolour paper. I think some people still use it, but there's, there's more modern things these days. Um, so I'm roughing it up again on the sandpaper. I'm using my finger dipped in water just to activate the glue on that side. And I just generally just stick random pieces around the edges just to make it look like it's been falling apart and been repaired over the years again and again. So I've just ripped a piece off uh, make some little tears and creases make it as rough as you can using a bit of sandpaper on the thumbnail as well just to soften that edge and a bit of distress I haven't personally added any sewing to this project except for um, a tiny label that I found in my scraps um, but that would certainly look nice if you wanted to do that um, I would recommend just adding the sewing before gluing the whole thing together. I've really been um, enjoying using bits of yellowed tape so masking tape uh, looks really good just um, ordinary masking tape and I'm just running the edges of the tape across my ink pad and um, then the back of it as well. Uh, Versafine toffee colour is the uh, the one that I'm favouring for doing this which gives a more of a yellowed um, colour rather than brown and for the same reason I've been using uh, for the distress on the edges I've been using uh, antique linen I found to be a good colour it's not too brown and grungy 
it's not exactly what I was looking for but I was wanting just like a an aged yellowing effect going on so uh, I'm thinking that the uh, antique linen looks really good and um, if I want a bit darker I've been going for frayed burlap in the distress inks um, which I found just to be like a uh, a more realistic brown, um, not too grungy. Another idea I've been using is to have a bit of book page instead of tape along the edges and of course as you can see you can use washi tape and just layer up those um, borders and tapes as much as you please. I'm using a little strip of tape and picking up some book page, running the edges across my stamp pad and just wipe the excess away with your finger and then dry it off with a tissue and that looks pretty cool. I've also been using tape to pick up little uh, bits of dried black ink off my um, surface protector. You could see it had some uh, dried paint on there. And also don't forget to sometimes um, stick them a little bit wonky, that looks really nice as well. I have um, an old envelope that I'm just going to slot in here and glue in. I'm not decorating this too much. It always makes me smile when I see somebody else's notes written. Um, this has a little annotation because I got a bunch from uh, stamp collector so it has some numbers scrolled on it which is always nice just adding a little bit more tape layer up those tapes as much as you want and a little bit of pale blue washi on that side I'm using a nice um, Rolodex style punch on the side just to indicate some ancient filing system that this might have been a part of one at one time. I'm also using some of these lovely labels from Tracy Fox Creative. Um, I've chosen a couple with a red border and one this nice dark green one. I'm allowing the glue to dry a little bit on the green one on the front and um, then I'm going to just kind of rip off part of it. Um, I forgot to distress on the glue side but if you do do that um, you can get a nice kind of dirty glue mark um, when you rip it off so that looks quite good but um, I managed to still get a good effect here. I'm using a watercolour pencil dipped in water to um, just right over that masking tape and using the water to smudge it a little bit and um, I think that looks really good actually it looks like a like an old worn out felt tip and then I'm sticking a couple of uh, stamps which I've chosen for the colour um, and also the fact that they're one colour so that they look a little bit old as well and then I'm using a test strip of masking tape to make sure I like how the particular pen is behaving. Uh, I'm using a dipping pen with wet ink um, and just doing some scrolls on there, adding a little bit of a blob on the end of the cellar tape just to allow that to bleed in a little bit. And then I'm just using my finger and a tissue just to move it around, make some smudges and I want it to look as though lots of different people have written over it, added their notes over the years, um, different pens, different writing. Um, I had to search high and low to find an old ballpoint pen. <laughs> and this here is a lovely idea that I saw on um, Shinuki Art. YouTube channel and she has some really um, interesting ideas and lovely ideas. Um, well, this is a really nice way just to add a border, add some crude marks around the edges of your work. Um, so again for that part I was using a, 
black watercolour pencil. So the inspiration for this project comes from being very young and uh, going to the doctors um, and they would have your medical notes in these brown envelope sleeves. Uh, I don't know if they did that the same in other countries but that was the system here and I was so fascinated by it. It would have just notes scribbled on the outside and a mass of paper sticking out the top. Um, I don't actually recall anyone ever opening it or reading anything so um, for me I guess it was just a fascination of the unknown perhaps um, and even though I'm sure it was very boring inside I just longed to um, touch it and play with it and see what these papers said. So I very much wanted to um, not do a replica piece exactly as I haven't used any medical ephemera or anything but um, just to achieve that feel of being filed one way and then another way and of a very well used functional lasted for years repaired over and over again document um, so the style as you can see is very utilitarian which I've always been drawn to um, I was definitely just going for a particular kind of look when I made these um, having said that the idea of a medical one actually like a steampunk pharmacy style would suit it very well with like pill labels and things like that that could be quite cool uh, just as an idea Uh, so the first few I made I wanted to be reasonably strict about the utilitarian style so I used Rolodex style punches, treasury tags, basic tapes um, my background papers were authentic ephemera charts, timetables, ledgers and I added the interest with different pens and writing as though it had been added to over the years um, a few basic labels, staples, things like that and then later I allowed myself to expand the pool a bit um, and experiment with different looks uh, while applying the same methods with the gummed tape and the the aging effects so I then introduced some scrapbook papers, botanical stamps uh, some nice beads and angles you could use lace ribbons, die cuts, whatever is your fancy. I'm holding my hand quite high up to get these um, splash marks so you can see um, the really nice splash that you get uh, when you do that. Um, however I'm not quite happy with the layout here. Um, I felt it was too much like in a square, uh, those three big spots. So. Um, I wanted to either remove that or cover it up if removing it didn't work but I think it worked quite well. Um, I'm adding another little bit of yellowed sellotape to my um, binding ends just to uh, hold them in place. Um, this is because it's not proper binding I haven't gone up and then down again to tie it off it's uh, never going to hold itself in place so um, the sellotape serves two purposes there um, I had at some point apparently lost the the top thread probably when I was messing about with staples so I've poked that back through with a needle and secured it down I don't know if you've ever been frustrated like me when you try to put beads on a safety pin and then attach it to fabric. You, ca you can't because the beads and the fabric are trying to go on the same side. Um, so what I've been doing is deconstructing a, a pin uh, so that, that if you imagine the two arms of a pin, one is the actual pin and one is like blocked. So I'm adding the um, beads to the blocked side so that they're fixed in there 
and um, just coiling it round. You'll need some needle nose pliers to do this. And um, that's really great because it leaves that pin side then free to attach it nicely to fabric which means you get a nice dangle and nice movement on the beads as well so um, I'm really pleased with that idea. I'm just going to show you also um, so these are two centimeter pins that I'm using and I'm just going to show you how I, you can even make a smaller one than that so um, if you just start coiling a bit further up and you'll see that it makes a really tiny little super cute pin to add to your paper or fabric. Um, so just coil it round as it was and I'm just flattening the end with some flat pliers and I'm going to just snip off that extra length. Still too long, snip a bit more there we go and I'll show you it next to the two centimeter one so I think that's it from me um, thank you for spending some time with me today everyone take care all and may your days be green and golden and full of lovely papery things bye bye guys see you soon